you sick and tired of not sticking to the resolutions that you set every single year? All right, come on, I know that you're totally over the fact that every year on December 31st, you write down a list of things that you're gonna stick to, and then before you know it, it's the next year, and you're sitting down writing down the exact same things all over again because you just didn't stick to them and you let them fall off, and now you're back to square one. Yeah, that was me for years and years and years. So I decided to make it my goal to come up with the best New Year's planning strategy ever known to man and womankind. And I have been able to successfully stick to every single commitment that I've made with myself for the past couple of years with this blueprint that I mapped out. It is a three-part blueprint called the Best Year Blueprint. It is a no resolutions necessary strategy to mapping out the best year of your life. And it works. How do I know it works? Because I'm the guinea pig and I've used it for the past couple of years and I've accomplished everything that I said that I would do and more. So what's this mean to you? Well, it's really, really good news because I've actually created a totally free guide and a video where I'm explaining my three-part best year blueprint so that you can go and use this strategy to create the best year of your life too. So all you have to do to go get the free guide and the video is go to thebestyearblueprint.com. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's thebestyearblueprint.com. Go to that link and download your free guide. I mean, my gosh, you don't want to miss this. If you're somebody that loves goal setting and actually wants to stick to your goals this year, you definitely want to join me in order to sign up and download your free guide, free video of the Best Year Blueprint. Go to thebestyearblueprint.com. Can't wait to celebrate the very best year with you ever of all time. If an opportunity is for you, You don't have to say yes to it in a yucky way that feels out of integrity. It will come to you, again, I promise, in a way that feels good. You can let go of things and trust and know that if it's for you, if you're supposed to have that experience, be part of that group, speak on that stage, whatever it is, have that thing, make that money, do that partnership. If it doesn't feel good and your gut says say no, it will come to you in a different way, shape, or form. It doesn't have to come from that person in that way, in that thing. If it's for you, it'll happen. What if today was the day that you dared yourself to do what you've always wanted? Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. I'm your host, Jen Gottlieb, and together we're going to step outside of our comfort zones and into our best lives one dare at a time. So come on, I dare you to dive right on in. Hello, family. Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. Today's my birthday, y'all. Today, if you're if you're listening to this on the day that it launched, which is December 28th, this is my birthday episode. Now, obviously, right now, where I, when I'm sitting here recording this for you, it's not my birthday, but I know that this is coming out on my birthday. So let's travel through time together right now, and you're sitting there, and I'm in your ear, and it's my birthday. Yay, hooray, yay. Uh, so this is going to be a really fun episode. I love my birthday and I don't love my birthday because of presents or parties. In fact, I don't need or like any of that stuff, but I love my birthday because it is on December 28th, which is the end of the year, which y'all know I love the end of the year. I love reflecting on the year. I love planning the year ahead. And so I'm just really feel blessed and lucky that my end of year around the sun happens at the same time as like the world's year end around the sun or whatever you want to call it. Like it's the end of the real year. It's the end of my year. It's the beginning of my new year. It's the beginning of the world's new year. And it just worked out that way. Another reason why I love my birthday is because my mom shares my birthday with me. I was born on my mother's birthday, which if if any of you are really into astrology or anything like that, could you please DM me and tell me what the hell that means? Because not only was I born on my mom's birthday, but I know at least 10 other people that have the same birthday as me, December 28th. Is there something to that? Is this like a special day or like was nine months before this day a really popular day to have sex? Someone please let me know because I've yet to find out why the hell everyone on earth that I meet, well, that's an exaggeration, but a lot of people that I meet either know someone that was born on December 28th or were born on December 28th. In fact, my mom and I, we share the same birthday and then she married someone, her second husband, who also had the same birthday as us, which is just wild. what are the chances? I thought he was lying. In fact, like I was like, oh, he just wants to get with you, mom. So he's saying it's his birthday. Can we check his ID? It definitely was his birthday. 
Anyways, I digress. So today is the birthday episode, and there are a couple things that I do every year on my birthday, and one of them I want to share with you specifically, and that's um, I think about the biggest lessons that I learned in the year of being that age. So today, if you're listening to this on December 28th, I'm turning 37 years old. Whoa! So I, you know, my 36th year. What did I? What are the biggest lessons that I learned being 36? And on Instagram, I'll probably post. 36 lessons, maybe if I can even get to them, but usually I'll do that. But today I'm going to tell you my top five lessons from my 36th year. And I live for what I learn each year. It's not necessarily celebrating the cool stuff that I did, but it's more about like the lessons that I learned so I can bring them into the next year and use those lessons to create even more amazingness in my life and the life of others. Another thing that I do that I just wanted to give you so you could do it too because it's really fun is every year on my birthday for as long as I can really remember like my adult life, I've written down a number of wishes for the number of years I've been alive. So let's just give an example for my 20th birthday. I wrote down 20 wishes. It's actually 21 because you do one for good luck, but 20 wishes for my 20th year alive and 21 and, and the last one is the one for good luck. And so um, on my 35th birthday or my 36th birthday last year, I wrote down 36 wishes or 37 wishes for my 36th birthday. And I have not looked at them yet on my birthday. The really cool thing to do is to open up your notebook with your wishes and see which ones came true. Now, the cool thing about this is many of them don't come true, but I, I could look back to like my 35th birthday or my 30th birthday. And many of the wishes that I wrote down back a few years ago have come true now. So it's a really cool reminder that Maybe it won't happen in a year, but if you write it down and you set the intention and you put it out there into the universe and you dare yourself to think that big and to stretch that big and to dream that dream that uh, um, clearly and really go there and say things like I used to say for years, like I want to be on the cover of a magazine, like I wish to be on the cover of a magazine and it didn't happen until this year. And so, but that's really cool. I get to like check that off the list and, and I'm just a big, it's not necessarily a wish, but it's an intention. It's putting it out into the universe. It's telling God, telling the universe what it is that you want, writing it down on a very special day, which is the day that you're born and visualizing it, thinking about it and then putting it away and not looking at it again for a year. So that's a really powerful, fun thing that everybody can do on their birthday if you're into that kind of thing. It, and I, I can't wait to like on my birthday, it's like my little gift that I get to open up my notebook from last year and read the wishes that I wrote down and see which ones came true. It's also a little piece of my best year blueprint as well. I mean, it ties in a little bit. It's, a, it's an extra thing that I do for my birthday. But by the way, if you didn't download the best year blueprint yet, go get it. It's so powerful. It's my free PDF guide and video teaching you how to use a three-step process to create the greatest year of your life no resolutions necessary. So go grab that. You go to thebestyearblueprint.com. We'll put the link in the show notes. Okay. So let's dive in to this episode and the five biggest lessons that I've learned my 36th year. These are the most powerful. And when I sat down and I thought of what are the, what are the biggest lessons I learned? These were the ones that came to top of mind. I learned so many lessons this year. This year was a year of growth. It was a year of a lot of wins. It was a year of a lot of failures. Um, so much growth, so much happened this year, but these are the top five things that came to my mind immediately when I thought of the lessons that I learned. The first one is if the opportunity is for you, it doesn't have to come from that person in that way. So what do I mean by this? There were a couple of opportunities that came across my desk or came to me this year that were what I wanted. They were what I've always wanted. But when I got the opportunity, it felt yucky. It felt out of integrity. It felt disconnected. It felt like, mm, I don't think that this is right for me to say yes to, but it was something I wanted, right? One of them was a really specific speaking engagement with really big speakers that I've always wanted to speak on a stage with. And I had the opportunity in front of me, but the way that the opportunity was presenting itself felt very gross. It just felt, you know, when you feel like off about something, like the whole method of which it was coming to me and the person that was delivering it to me and the way that it was being delivered just felt yucky. I'm not going to go into the details, but it didn't feel right. And I'm sure you can listen to this and, and be like, yeah, Jen, I get you. I've, I've, I've been in a situation like that where I've gotten an opportunity that I've always wanted and it just felt off. And so I, as much like I wanted to take that opportunity so bad, so bad, but it felt so, it, it just felt out of integrity. So I actually had to say no. And I felt immediate FOMO the second I said no. I was like, did I just make the wrong decision? Like, should I have just taken that even though it felt kind of gross? 
But the opportunity, because it was for me and it was supposed to happen for me, it came a few months later in a different form that didn't feel yucky, that didn't feel gross, that didn't feel out of integrity, that was so in alignment and so much better. So what I learned from that, and then another situation, there was a couple of situations like that. There was another opportunity to join a very specific group of women, like this mastermind, and the it, it just felt gross to me, and I turned it down. And the moment that I turned it down, because it felt off, it felt weird, I had immediate FOMO. I was like, I shouldn't have turned it down. Oh my God, I should have said yes. I should have said yes. Oh my God, can I take it back? And then a few days later, I got the opportunity in a different way, and I found I found out that my my gut was right about that specific opportunity, that it was wrong, and then it came, the same opportunity in a better way came later on. So my lesson was that if an opportunity is for you, you don't have to say yes to it in a yucky way that feels out of integrity. It will come to you again, I promise, in a way that feels good. You can let go of things and trust and know that if it's for you, if you're supposed to have that experience, be part of that group, speak on that stage, uh, whatever it is, have that thing, make that money, do that partnership. If it doesn't feel good and your gut says say no, it will come to you in a different way, shape or form. It doesn't have to come from that person in that way, in that thing. If it's for you, it'll happen. It'll happen. You just have to trust. You have to let go. You have to allow. You have to trust your gut, trust your intuition and trust that if you feel that something's off about that opportunity, it means that, that there is something off and you should wait for it to come in the right way. So that's number one. Number two, you always have more time and energy than you think. Okay. This was a big one for me because last year I held myself back in a lot of ways because I feared that I didn't have enough time and energy to do the things that I wanted to do. So let me explain. I would get a uh, look at my calendar at the beginning of the week and it would be like jam packed with things. And then I would immediately start to cancel things because I'd be like, Oh my God, I can't handle all this. I have to take these things off the calendar. And then I would take the things off the calendar and I would cancel them. And I would, you know, not take up opportunities or not meet certain people or not go to certain things because of fear that I wouldn't be able to handle it. And then when the day would end, I'd be like, I had way more than enough time. I had way more than enough energy. I totally could have done that thing. And then I missed out on opportunities and I held myself back in that way. So this year, I decided to be more flexible. I decided to say yes. I decided to make a conscious decision to understand and know that I have more time and more energy than I can even fathom and I'm capable of doing all the things. So I did an experiment and I just said to my chief of staff, I was like, don't let me off the hook. We're going to do all these things. Hold me accountable. If I put something on my calendar, I'm going to do it and I'm going to trust that I have time and energy to do it. That included traveling a lot. It included speaking on back to back stages. It included going from East Coast to West Coast. It included just pushing myself, pushing my boundaries, you know, pushing where I think that I'm comfortable. And it doesn't mean that I burnt myself out because here's the thing I didn't. I didn't burn out at all this year. And I did more than I've ever done in my entire life this year. I didn't burn out because I was very strategic about my recovery, number one. So I would plan all of these things and do all of these things. And when I had pockets of time when I could recover, I would strategically recover and I would make it my job to recover. But then I would go right back into saying yes and showing up and not canceling things and trusting that I had the time and I had the energy. And every night I would go to bed, I'd be like, see, you had more time than you thought. You had more energy than you thought. Aren't you happy you did that thing? So I I really made flexibility uh, an important important piece. It was, in fact, one of my words of the year this year was flexibility and knowing that I could say yes to things and I could be flexible and I could go last minute and I could put more things on my schedule than I think that I'm capable of. And I, as long as I'm serving and doing things that I love, I will always have enough energy. I think we get burnt out when we're doing things that are out of alignment from who we are and what we really want. And when you start slamming your schedule with things that you don't really love that don't lift you up, it sucks your energy out. And when you don't strategically plan your recovery in between all of the things, then you can easily get too tired or get burnt out or start to hate what you, what you do. So there is a twofold thing here. Like, yes, I, I decided that I was going to trust and know that I had energy and time and capacity to do all of the things that came into my life as long as I prioritized the time when I wasn't doing those things to recover, to rest, to put boundaries up and to protect my energy and really refill my cup when I need it. And then also to celebrate the fact that I was doing more than I thought that I was capable of. And it really taught me a lot by the end of the year. And that goes into um, the, next, the next one, which is discomfort's temporary and time never stops. This year, I got the tattoo, time tattooed on my wrist. And it was, it's simply my reminder that 
no matter how uncomfortable I am, let's say I'm on a six hour flight and I'm just like dying to get off that flight and my legs are killing me because I'm sitting or I, you know, I'm just like feeling nauseous or I don't feel good, whatever. It could be physical discomfort. It could be uh, discomfort in an argument that you're having or discomfort in going live on Instagram with no makeup on or, you know, any kind of discomfort, uh, discomfort in having to sit through um, a really uncomfortable meeting or a really uncomfortable conversation or um, having to wait for an opportunity that you're just like, I'm so impatient. I want to know right away. Like, I, this is so uncomfortable. Whatever it is, that discomfort is not forever. It stops eventually. And if you can just know that when you're sitting in the discomfort and know without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what, the one thing that is certain is you will end up in your bed that night and you will go to sleep and you will wake up the next day and that discomfort will be over in 2.5 seconds, it'll feel like, you have freed yourself from being anxious in that moment. So what I've learned this year is like when I'm when I was going and going and taking opportunities and saying yes and being seen and putting myself out there this year and really being intentional and trusting and knowing that I had the capacity to do more. Whenever I felt uncomfortable, I would just say to myself, this is going to pass. You can do it. Just like a workout. The discomfort's only temporary. Pretty soon you're going to be lying on the mat and you're going to be done, right? But if you don't put in the discomfort, if you don't experience that, if you don't stretch yourself, you're never going to get to where you want to be on the other side of that discomfort. So that's another lesson that I learned. Um, And then another one, so number four, I guess you would say, is consistency is key. Consistency. I have spent a lot of my life not being consistent, starting things and then stopping them or self-sabotaging or saying I'm going to do something and only doing it for a few months or a few weeks or a few days and then stopping. This year, I took consistency really seriously and I pushed myself to be consistent with my with the commitments that I make with myself. And because that's what I've been preaching, I got to I got to walk the talk. I can't just tell people to stick with the commitments they make with themselves consistently and not do that. So, I, you know, here's a big lesson that I learned, especially with uh, social media. So, for those of you who are trying to build a brand on social media and get followers and build an audience, uh, my word of the years, my my word of the years, my words of the year were content and flexibility. Now, with content, I made a commitment to consistently post content every single day to create unbelievable amounts of content and post them all the time, no matter what, every day. And when I say all the time, that's a huge exaggeration. I would post at least once a day. And nor- and that would typically take me to posting more than once a day. Uh, but in the beginning, the first full quarter, I mean, I-, I would say actually the entire year up until November, I was not gaining that much traction that I could see with the content that I was creating. It was, I, I didn't have anything pop really. I didn't have anything really go viral. It was kind of stagnant. It was like, I'm posting all this content and I don't know if anybody's seeing it. And then I started going live on Instagram every morning and I decided to make that something consistent that I never didn't do. Like unless, I mean, unless I was traveling or I was doing something that morning that I couldn't get ready live on Instagram um, because it was maybe at five in the morning or something, but I did it consistently. And the thing that I want to remind you of is you may be doing something consistently and you might not see the win happen for a while. But if you stop when you're getting to like, you're getting to that precipice, you're, you might be getting there. And if you stop before the wins happen and you stop the consistency because you feel like it's not working, you're never going to realize the win. You're never going to see it. And I'm so glad that I kept going. I'm so glad that I didn't stop even when I wasn't seeing the results that I wanted. I kept going no matter what. And then just last month, I had one video go viral. I got 1.5 million views. And because that happened, it kickstarted my I don't know what happened with the algorithm with Instagram. And I brought in so many new, amazing people into my life via social media and it all started to pay off. Now, this didn't happen until November. I was posting consistently every day from January on. It didn't happen. It didn't pop till November. So you have to be consistent and you have to keep going. Even if you don't see the results immediately, they will present themselves. But if you stop your consistency before it becomes fully realized, I'm still not fully realized with this, by the way. I'm going to still keep on going. But if you stop before, then you'll never know. Okay. And the last but not least, number five lesson that I learned, um, I mean, there's so many lessons, but this is like one that I'm going to talk about today, is you're always happy you went. You usually don't want to go. I don't know. Maybe this isn't for everybody, but my introverted friends out there, for me personally, I usually don't ever really want to go to an event, to a dinner to a networking thing, even to hang out with a friend. My initial brain will say, oh, I hope they cancel or, oh, I hope they never, they don't call or I hope they, you know, like I hope they have a, take a rain check just because I am, I am an introvert in my heart and my brain 
will immediately go to this thought of, I'd rather stay home. And it's not necessarily my reality. It's just like where my brain is comfortable saying like, oh, I'd rather stay home. But when I, I've pushed myself this year to go, to show up, even when I don't want to. And my mantra has always been, you're always happy you went because I'm always happy I went. I go and then I come home. And when I come home, I either have an amazing story of a shitty event that went totally wrong, and but I have a great story to tell. Or I always have something that happens. I have a great experience. I meet a great person. I have a great conversation. A great opportunity presents itself. Um, I have a great photo, a great memory, whatever. You're always happy you went. You don't usually want to go, but you're happy you went. So if there's, if you're like me and you're more introverted and you always cancel things or you don't show up for things because of that, that little fear that comes in right before you go, that's like, eh, I don't know if I want to go. It's raining out. It's snowing. It's whatever. Like, I don't feel like I look cute or like I feel tired or, you know, push yourself, push yourself to go because nothing happens on your couch. Nothing. I mean, unless you're like, I don't know, you're online dating and you match with somebody on your couch and then you go out on a date with them. You still have to get outside. You have to get outside. You have to do things. Nothing happens if nothing happens. And if you go, you will always be happy you went. And if you don't go, you will always have that little nagging feeling of what if or FOMO. So you are always happy you went. All right, let's wrap up. The five top lessons of my 36th year. Number one, if the opportunity is for you, it doesn't have to come from that person or that thing. It will come from something else if it is for you. Number two, you have way more time than you think. You have way more time, way more energy, way more capacity than you initially think. Don't cancel things. Go for it. Do the thing. You get this one life. Do it. Uh, Next, discomfort is temporary. Discomfort's temporary, but growth is permanent. Any discomfort that you're in in the moment will not last longer than it is there for. It will, it will eventually dissipate. You will end up in your bed that night. You will end up waking up the next morning and you will not be in that discomfort anymore. It's temporary. Time never stops. Then number four, consistency is key. Stay consistent. Don't stop. Don't lose your momentum by feeling like you are failing. Don't stop. Consistency, persistence will get you everything that you want. And then number five, You're always happy you went. You never really want to go or most of the time or a lot of the time you don't really want to go, but you're always happy you went. (sighs) So those are my biggest lessons in my 36th year. I would love to hear which one's your favorite, which one you resonated with the most. And I dare you to start thinking about these five lessons in a different way this year. How can you remember that every opportunity that's for you is going to show up? How can you dare yourself to let go a little bit of certain things and not hold on so tightly and trust that the universe has your back. What my my friend Gabby Bernstein likes to always say, how can you be more consistent? I dare you to set a goal for this year and do it consistently and don't stop until the end of the year and see what happens. Like do a dare with each one of these, right? Like I dare you to sit in the discomfort. I dare you to sit in it. I dare you to go to the event, to go to the thing, to say yes and see how you feel when you come back. All right, my friends, I'm so glad that you spent my birthday with me listening to this podcast today. Uh, DM me. Let me know how you loved it. Share it with somebody that you think would get some value from it. Text it to them. Share it on social media. Uh, That would mean the world to me. That would be the greatest birthday gift that you could give me. And thank you for being part of my community, for just always being there. And I, I really feel like we're a family here. And I love you. And I'm so grateful for you. And I can't wait to rock 2023 with you. Let's do this. All right. Love you so much. See you next time on the I Dare You podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the I Dare You podcast. I'm so grateful you chose to spend this time with me, but I'm even more grateful for your future self that you are building one dare at a time. So my first dare for you is to subscribe to the show and then share it with a friend who you think needs to step a little bit more outside their comfort zone and into their best lives. They'll thank you for it. I'll see you next time on the I Dare You podcast.